Let's do it. Ron? All righty. Furry Family Reunion, written by Amy C. Maki. Interior Pet Store, Milwaukee, Training Area Day. Pet owners sit obediently with their animals and watch the training session in progress. Several chairs down sits Char, 35, a man in full body beagle dog suit with big floppy ears and large cloth eyes. A compact animal carrier rests next to Char's furry legs. Inside is Beeks, 15, an angry African gray parrot. His beady eyes glare up at Char. Shut the fuck up. Shut your fucking mouth. What's up, bitch? Next to Char, a wealthy pet owner eyes widen. Her standard bred poodle moves away. Char taps Beak's cage with his paw. You want to go this year? Then don't ruin it. A trainer, Kelsey, 30s, in a lab coat, briskly walks over. May I? Yeah. Char hesitantly nods. She opens the cage. Beak climbs easily onto her finger. Hmm. Clipped wing. So soon. They told me he terrorized a few puppy farms in India. He used to be happy. I bet it good. I paid big dollars for him. Suck my dick. Beaks bobs up and down. Kelsey clues in. What is this trauma? Char looks away. Kelsey analyzes. Bix was put in a suitcase with his family. And when they arrived, guess what happened? Yeah, they didn't make it. I just need to clean up the whole language. Kelsey puts a little bird muzzle on Bix. Bix will need lots of therapy to release this trauma. You need to use I statements, like I feel. Her hands create a frame. Flip it and frame it. When you bite my finger, I feel hurt. I can see you need blank. You have two choices. You can either bite this or bite this. Okay, now you try. I need you to be a loyal bird. It's producing a muffled squawk. That was good. I could really feel you meant it. Honestly, I've got to get him ready for the big green bay for immigration for con. And can't have him mouthing out off like this. This year they may allow feathers. I need to stand out and be recognized this year. It means the word to me. Leave him here and I'll have him ready in a few days. Kelsey puts Beaks in the carrier and slams the cage shut. Exterior, pet-friendly apartments day. It's paradise for pets and pet owners. Out front is a dog run with a pet-sized water fountain. Tenants sit on the benches, socializing with their happy pets. Interior, Char's studio apartment day. With one paw on the mouse, Char scrolls down, reading his emails. He nods his head in excitement. Yes. VIP frontline passes at Furcon. I've arrived. Beeks, I'm moving up. Um, number five. Beeks' cage is empty. Phone rings. Hey. I think your sound is off. Yeah, make sure. Mike's Hello? Here. Who? It's been a while. Uncle D? Oh, let me look. Char looks at his calendar with the red circle around Saturday. You know, I'd love to, but the for immigration program is not that date. I've been waiting for it all year. Oh, he died? I'm sorry to have... To hear that, Uncle George stuck his hand in the blender and hasn't been seen in two years. So Mike and Pete haven't been living with you? 
Draw stairs of the circle for a conde. Any other time would have been fine, but I'm in a good stance and can't lose that. Look, let me call the information line and get back to you. Click. Char stands there, standing at Beak's cage with his own voice echoing in his head. I just want you to be loyal. Char dials quickly. He taps his paw on the table. Paid families are welcome. They must follow all fur con protocols, and they must wear a fur suit. There are no feathers this year. I repeat, no feathers. Char hangs up and talks to the empty cage. Yes, Biggs, see you all the hook. You don't have to go. And you don't have to come home right away. Char dials. Uncle D, guess what? Exterior smart car moving early morning. Char's small car drives past endless cornfields. Char drives with his, uh, with his used Beagle dog suit on. A sign up ahead reads Green Bay. Interior smart car moving morning. Char hangs his head out the window. He laughs and lets the wind take his ears. He's so happy. Interior smart car moving later. After the fun, he tries to eat some dog biscuits. He finds an open spot in his suit. He nods his head. They're tasty. Char cranks up the music. There's an open road ahead. Exterior, rest area, later. Char stands in the grass and pees. Tourists stare. Interior, smart core, moment, car, moments later. Char reads the 100-page VIP handbook. His shoulders droop. Char looks out into the distance. Was this a good idea? He closes the book. Exterior, VIP parking lot, Green Bay, later. Char opens the glove box, searching. Nervous, Char fumbles with the VIP card. It falls down. His ears are in the way. Get a hold of yourself. You can do this. Char inserts the VIP. The gate lifts up. Exterior, Furcon Convention Center, entrance, day. Furries line up, dressed as dogs, wolves, bears, rabbits, and an occasional unicorn. Two lines form. VIP and no VIP. Char walks up. He takes a moment in. He takes the moment in. There it is, the Furcon Convention Building and the VIP line, complete with the red carpet. Char walks past the bears, the rabbits, and the unicorn. It's a feeling of pure Furcon power. Char reaches the door, where he is greeted by a giant panda in a tux. Char looks back at the long line behind him. VIP passes, please. Yes, sir. Right here. Welcome. An all-day pass includes the all-night games and events. Thanks. Giant Panda points to the memorial poster for Puddles, the poodle. The picture shows a full-size furry poodle falling off a bridge. He was ruthlessly pushed off the Mechanic Bridge. And it was the CEO of Bluey's favorite fur con furry. Oh, that's terrible. Who would do such a thing? Giant Panda shakes it off. Enjoy the convention. And there's Bluey now. In the distance, a powerful blue wolf in a suit, the top dog of the organization, CEO Bluey. He steps out of a limousine with two pit bull, pit bull pot bodyguards. Fans go crazy taking pictures. CEO Bluey is sheltered by the pit bull's coats and ushered in. Please stand back, everyone. CEO Bluey stops to sign an autograph, then pauses at the memorial poster with Puddles the Poodle. Mr. Bluey, I'm Char, the number five VAP. CEO Bluey ignores him. Char lowers his paw. Interior Furcon main hall moments later. Ultimate Furcon fun. Table stacked high with goodies for the taking. New dog bowls, brushes, and souvenirs. Dogs are playing ball with the lead hula hooping beavers. With a Furcon bag and paw, 
Char strolls around and stops at the Furcon VIP table. Hey, Char, is that you? Char, Char slowly turns around and is horrified. One large duck and two smaller ducks stand there looking at Char, and one hugs quiet T Rex. No, this. Uncle D lifts his duck bill back, and it sure is a man with a heavy, greasy beard. Looks like he's just come out of the backwoods of Minnesota because he did. It's me, Uncle D, and your two cousins might compete and are friendly men in the parking lot. Hey. Hey. Rex nods his head. It's been the years. 35 years. I held you as a baby. Time has flown by. Get he it? Flaps his fingers. Well, no I guess that's all of us. Go ahead. Well, I guess. All that wanted to show me. Fuck him. Uh -oh. Technical difficulty. Uh, Char looks up for some place to hide all of them. Welcome. Char looks for some place to hide all of them. How just, did you get in before me? I had VIP passes. I just threw that panda there a few bones and he just kept his muzzle shut. The real deal is his feathers. The real deal suits are pretty penny, $2,900 new. Give you a shout if you had one of these dressed up in the north. So you know what I did. Jenny had a school playoff about an ugly duckling or something. And so I borrowed them. Quack, quack. <laughs> Who's the brains of the family? You do. Say it. You do. They'll hear you. Who? Those pussies in the dog costume. Char is taken back. CEO Bluey is coming their way. He grabs a tablecloth, rips it in two, and quickly covers the cousins. They look like duck superheroes. <clears throat> go, go, go! Rex holds the folding table over his head. Char pushes them all under the table. It's no use. It's too late. CEO Bluey stands there, arms folded with his pit bulls. Ah, one of our most loyal Furcon patrons. Is this your family? Um... Uh... Um, kind of, yeah. Char reaches out his paw. It's really an honor to meet. The pit bulls push Char's paw back. Hope you're enjoying yourselves. Now go fetch. CEO Bluey throws out a bouncy ball. Char runs over and retrieves it. Good boy. Uncle D shakes his head in disgust. Interior fun and games room later. Lights are low. Pete and Mike play laser tag in the background with the other furries. All three of them sit at a table, drink beer, and eat snacks. I never leave my suit. Never? Come to think of it, I haven't taken mine off since we left the cabin. Actually, none of us have. Rex nods, Char thinks. Whoa, really? I thought it was just me. Not to get too personal or anything, but Uncle George is the one responsible for pushing Poodle's the Poodle off the Mackinac Bridge back in 2015. Char's head turns. He can't believe what he just heard. You're making this up. My God, you could ruin me. Just a little family secret. Hide me. All over the papers. He changed his name. To what? Hunter. Just then, the F-350 pickup truck crashes through the wall and plows over the tables. He screeches to a halt right in the middle of the room. Hunter, 60s, a man with a long ZZ Top beard and sunglasses, hops out of his truck wearing camouflage overalls. With a bandaged hand, he snaps a beaver trap high in the air. Snap, 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 snap. Rah! Well, that's the whole family. Hunter pulls out a second trap. The crowd screams. 
Beavers scatter. A bear dives under the table. The unicorn gallops around the room and whinnies. Hunter focuses his trap on a shaking rabbit in the corner. <laughs> Stay there, you shitty rabbit. Stop, you're under arrest. The security guard laser tags Hunter. He just laughs. Ah. Hunter grabs the shaking rabbit and throws her in the truck. He peels out and crashes back through the wall and is gone. Interior fun and games room later. On a carpeted stand in the doghouse, Char, super depressed, is inside with just his droopy ears and no sticking out. No, he put himself in there. Lights are on and the mess has been cleaned up. Three furry primates walk in with the instruments and start setting up their equipment on stage. A monkey electric pianist, monkey electric guitarist, and a monkey drummer tune their instruments. Rex and Uncle D watch them a bit skeptical. It quiets down. The lead singer looks out onto the crowd. Hey, this one is for the furry family. Be one, be true. The crowd cheers. In unity, the band holds up their instruments. Rex and Uncle D drink their beers. Tap, tap, tap. A classic rock tune begins. They smile and start bobbing their heads to the beat. Furries get out on the dance floor and get grooving. Someone turns the lights down, beverages are flowing. From the doghouse, Char watches his family make their way out onto the dance floor. Dance sequence. One, Cousin Pete and Mike do stupid moves with the unicorn. Two, Uncle D tries to break dance. Three, Rex walks around, they get stuck in the corner. Music gets faster, dancers gather on the floor. Interior, fun, and games room much later. Uncle D gets up on stage. It gets quiet. And this one's for the family, for or feathers. Doesn't matter. He raises his beard to Char, Pete, Mike, and Rex. Pete knows the song. He gets him started. Hey, you shot my cow. It's the second Uncle week of deer. Go, on. go. On. Second week of deer camp. I've got a swollen head. I'm lying with the dust falls underneath my bed. An icy breeze is blowing in through the tongue and through. My pants are frozen to the floor and I'm too sick to move. And I'm too sick to move. I don't, I didn't drink too much. Only 30 cans of beer. It must have been last shot that put me under here. It's all the second, it's the second week of deer camp and all the guys are here. We drink, we play cards and shoot the bull, but never shoot the deer. The only time we leave this camp is when we go for beer. The second week of deer camp is the greatest time of year. The Cousin Pete and Cousin Mike sing along. I remember playing poker. That weasel must have won. He's wearing my new swampers. I'm sleeping with my gun. He's snoring like a chainsaw. The can smells like a dump. And someone's dirty underwear is hanging on the pump. Mike's in the wood box. Wiener's passed out on the stove. His flame shirt is smoking. I wonder if he knows. Bomb is crawling. T. Rue down the door. I think he got frostbite he passed out down out house and he's been there since last night and good fuss stumbles ah t rare the door he says he got a butt he was coming from the the wayside and killed it with his truck in musty cracks a bear and says it's time to celebrate good fuss got the first look since 1968 the crowd cheers, a drum roll. CEO Bluey waves to the crowd as he approaches the stage. Uncle D gets down off the stage. My fur con friends and family, it's time for the family secret game. Uncle D looks over at Char, who looks over at him. Ah, we all love a secret, but the winner is the one who tells the best deep, dark, hidden family secret of all. The crowd cheers. And the winner will receive a lifetime VIP pass to all the Furcon events. More cheers. Secret game montage. Up on stage, unicorn shares, bear shares, fox shares. Rex is up on stage and does not talk. Unicorn again. Resume scene. Rex, Uncle D, Cousin Pete, and Cousin Mike all huddle. Okay. What do we got? The, we never take off these suits. No, that's what the bear said. Let's ask Char. 
Uncle D approves. They all walk over to Char. Doghouse area. Uncle D peeks his head into the doghouse. Char's droopy eyes stare at the doghouse walls. Hey, you got any good secrets? I know what you want me to say. I was thinking you could make something up. We know how important this is to you. I'm honest, you know, loyal, I can't lie, especially at Furcon. Then tell them the truth and we'll scrap. Truck pauses. You do that? Hey, we're family. A little loony, but still family. There's a long pause. Char looks down. Uncle D nods his head. He respects that. They all back away and go back to their table. In the doghouse. Char peeks his head out and watches them walk away. Up on stage, CEO Bluey holds a paper high. You're about ready to add up the scores. Can anyone beat that unicorn's meat-loving father was actually the naked man featured in the 2019 Pitta ad? And a cow was breastfeeding him? The crowd looks around. Even for a treat? CEO Bluey waves a bone treat toward Char. I have a secret. The crowd quiets down. Uncle D is stunned. He looks over at Rex, Cousin Pete, and Cousin Mike, signaling where to exit. Char climbs down from the doghouse and makes his way to the stage. All the furries watch him walk up. Well, our number five VIP may be on his way to being our number one VIP. He hands Char the mic. Furcon means the world to me. I've waited two years to get to the number five baby spot, and I never gave up. And there's anyone else out there who I can help. Here's one thing I'll say. Never give up. Uncle D, Cousin Pete, Cousin Mike, and Rex start to make their way to the exit. The secret is... Inside Char's suit, Char's face is completely burned, scarred. Burn scar. I never take the suit off. I wear it everywhere, even when I sleep. Thank you. Back to scene. Uncle D's eyes widen in disbelief. He didn't turn them in. He lied for his family. Uncle D stares at a, starts a clap, and the family joins him. Rex goes up on stage and walks Char back. Uncle D, Cousin Pete, and Cousin Mike proudly watch Char walk back. Spotlight shines on CEO Bluey. And the winner is Unicorn. Your very own meat-loving father was the naked man featured in 2019 PETA ad, and the cow was breastfeeding him. Congratulations. The crowd cheers. Unicorn gallops up to the stage. Thank you, and be sure you donate on the way out tonight for my dear favorite furry, furry Puddles the Poodle. Uncle D shakes Char's paw, then hugs Char. Hey, you one loyal dog. You've got all of you. Char nods his head as he looks around the table. To be loyal to. Interior pet store training area weeks later. Pet owners sit and wait obediently with their animals. Several chairs down sits Char in his beagle dog suit. A birdcage rests next to his furry legs. Uh, you have two choices. You can either bite this or bite this. Oof, crash. Hunter's F-350 truck plows through the pet store and lands in the middle of the training area. Hunter stops, hops out, and muzzles the Kelsey, the trainer. Fuck you! Freak. Char looks at all the stunned people and grabs Beak's cage and gets into the truck. In the back is Uncle D, Cousin Pete, Mike, Rex, and a Playboy bunny. Char rolls down the window. This place is for the birds. Beaks bobs up and down in agreement. Hunter revs back and crashes out of the store. Fade to black. The end. Woo! Good job, guys. Cool, cool. Just a couple notes. Uh, let's make sure we have our mics ready and then also try not to, you know, read over the narrator because 
you know, we want to make sure we get that narrator in there too. But um, besides that, you guys was awesome. You gave it energy, and uh, that was that was great. Um, again, I appreciate your time. Let's talk about the script. What you guys think about it? I will be sending this to the writer, so don't, don't be shy. Uh, so for the Uncle D part, I mean, it was a tough one since, you know, I don't get the typecast, but I, I grew up in parts of uh, Wisconsin. So like the accent, it's like some of the word, like the wording is really hard with like the Wisconsin accent. So like a lot of people up North, like the accent that you want would they say like a, you know, like a similar, like Minnesota, like Fargo accent. So like, it's really hard if it's like, there's nothing like diction wise in the wording for like some of his lines. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, I thought that it was a, a really fun script and it definitely plays with a lot of interesting things with like Char and his relation to his family. And like furries are like kind of weird and it's an interesting thing to like put on stage and explore that world. But I was a little confused um, by like the furry versus like animals distinction, like Beak seems to be a real parrot, but he also speaks in a way that like you presume that he understands what's going on and presumably he'd be played by an actor in some sort of fursuit. And also like the hunter character like kidnaps a rabbit furry and like, I don't know. So there's like, this weird distinction and maybe that's purposeful that it's like a blurring of the lines, but I, I find that confusing on the read through. Okay, yeah. Um, yeah, I can understand how that can uh, be kind of confusing. Um, but I think they was trying to, uh, the goal is to combine the two as humans and animals and uh, to, I guess, what pets is a good example of that. Uh, but. You know, they try, you know. <laughs> so, anybody else? So, for the chart part, I think uh, you can read through the line, you can hear it, how important this constant uh, for him. And uh, I think the most funniest part is uh, where Bix uh, started to make his lines. And uh, yeah, that's it. Like uh, at the end when Big's uh, crowd, or not crowd, but what he said, like the, the last his line, I think this is um, one of the funniest. I'm not sure which line you're, you're talking about. In which page was it on? Uh, it's uh, in page number 17. Oh, the last uh when he said uh, this line to the trainer. Oh, the trainer line, okay. Yeah, fuck you, beats. yeah. Um, yeah, because he was uh, off the stage for such a long time and this final, his part is amazing, I think. <laughs> Anybody else? It could be either animated or live action. I probably said that last time. But... Yeah, that was yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool. Any other characters and parts you like? Questions? Oh, it's a quiet group. I remember reading I mean, I like that. <laughs> It's the quietest group I ever had. <laughs> I like I like the script overall. It just feels like a little bit like drafty. Like there's a lot of ideas that are very interesting, but I don't feel like they get like fully developed. And so like I feel like there is like a lot there, and there's definitely some funny interactions. But I don't know. It seems like a little rough at times. Okay, fair enough. Like it seems like it could maybe be like cut down or or longer you know 
to tie things together. I don't know. Right on. Janice? No, she went away. That's a good way to respond, I guess. That's just, that's just more. <laughs> oh, oh, what? Do it back. No comment. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, oh, you did that on like, purpose. Okay. No, uh, no, sorry, I got all stuff going on here in the book, but um, <laughs> um yeah. Thanks everybody uh, said it, you know, it's a bit confusing at points, but um yeah, there's some like I feel like character development needed for some um characters but it's funny so i like that so it's a little bit more work i think this could be like the a really good script and movie down the if that's what the writer wants to make it one day so. i think cool. that the writer does have a natural way of uh of uh, creating characters and having them interact yeah, it's entertaining or funny. So is this script uh, getting shopped or is it more of a, like a draft? Um, I would say it's more of a draft. Just, I don't think, I'm not, I don't think she's planning on shooting this. Um, yep. She's uh, planning on shooting some other stuff she ran. Uh, she has some features. So she said she's working on it, about to shoot a feature she wrote. So. But um, yeah, tomorrow's script should be uh, a little bit more interesting, I suppose. <laughs> uh, a lot more characters. So um, yeah, if we have any technical difficulties tomorrow, just let's make sure we back each other up and stuff. And uh, the scripts, use, I usually uh, keep the scripts pretty short. So, you know, we'd be here about 45 minutes to an hour. So, you know, you can still, plan around it or whatever it may be, your auditions and whatnot. <laughs> Sorry, cat. So late for you. <laughs> cool.